most people don't, we don't tend to think that um, fire is a, a chemical reaction, but that's exactly what it is. So it's like a recipe, we need to get all those things in their right proportions. So what's happening here is we've got the heat, we've got the oxygen and we've got the fuel, but we've got them in the, in the wrong order because what's happening is the heat from this is actually driving, heating the wood ahead of the fire and driving off smoke. And smoke is basically just unburnt fuel. And smoke is basically just unburnt fuel. But it's not passing through the flame. So we're just exhausting all the, all the fuel out of the, uh, the wood and actually putting it up the spout and into the atmosphere. What a rocket stove does though in contrast is, again, We've got, um, we've got our fuel, and we're burning it on its end. But if you imagine this is our wood here, and we light our fire here at the bottom, and because we're getting a draft effect on the chimney, we're actually getting a pulling effect. So we're actually getting air drawn in around the sticks. But as you can see, what happens here is, one, this air coming in is cooling the fuel behind the flame, so we're not getting any any smoke driven off here, and, and the little that is just where that's burning is actually being drawn past and through the flame, so it's getting burnt as it comes off the wood, which is in direct contrast. I mean, if we wanted to simulate that here, we would almost light the sticks at the top so that we're driving the flame and burning all the fuel in front of. So it's just turning the, this basically turned that idea on its head. So a little bit of terminology. So the, this section is called the heat riser. Some people would call it a chimney or whatever, but it has a different function in a rocket stove. So that's that bit and basically it's, it's rising. This is our burn tunnel. It's this area that runs horizontally. And that's that area that rises horizontally. And this area here where we put the fuel in is the feed tube. It works because what we're doing is we're heating the air here and we're changing its density. As we heat a gas, the molecules vibrate and so they're less dense. So once they get to this point, they start to run upwards and they'll draw more air and the atmosphere is actually falling in behind. If you imagine a tub of water with a siphon in it, that's exactly what a rocket stove is. That's the atmosphere and what's happening is we're having, uh, the, the liquid is passing down so it's, it's, pumping, it's pumping the fluid through us like a siphon. So this less dense gas rises because it's less dense than the outside atmosphere. And so we, what happens is we draw the flame sideways. The other fundamental, so this is the, the fundamental layout. You can get rocket stoves that are known as an L tube. And what happens there is you have a shelf sits in these stoves and then you feed your fuel in and then the flame burns off like that. Of course, the big difference from this one to this one is that this is self-loading. We're actually using gravity to load the fuel in at the rate that we want. So we don't have to muck around with that. Whereas this one, if you're cooking food on top of that, you're literally managing the pan and jiggling wood all the time. So if you're jumping it too far in the back, um, you can stifle the fire if you're letting it come too far out here. You can stifle the fire. There's all sorts of things going on. Joel's got one that he um, he manufactured and took out for its first first run the other weekend, and you were sort of reporting. It's report okay. Yeah, it's okay. But yeah, you can fire it up later and have a Yeah, plan. you're reporting those difficulties. So yeah, so there's there's our feed tube, and it's basically an L shape, and there's our heat riser. Now. The other fundamental thing about a rocket stove too is that, and this has got it, is that the combustion area is, is insulated. So if you look at this rocket stove here, it will have a layer of insulation and henceforth that squiggly line is insulation around it. Now if we compare this to 
your typical box wood stove, there's a fundamental difference. So with rocket stoves, we let the combustion process happen in the most efficient manner we can, and then we extract the heat after. So we get everything done, then the heat, then we use the heat. A box stove, though, is a very different beast. Basically, you have a tin box, you'll have a vent at the front, you put your timber in, and of course, normally you'll light it at the bottom and the front. So, of course, what's happening is, for a start, the draft is actually pushing, making the flame burn into the wood and actually driving off smoke in front of it. And the other thing is that we might have a pot on top. And so we're drawing heat out of this area. And we also might have in some of the old stoves, there's an old Ray-Ban around the back yeah, that we can yeah, look at yeah, later. Okay. Okay. It might even have a, uh, a copper coil built into the back known as a wet back. And that will lead to a hot water tank. So again, drawing heat out of the, the combustion process. So immediately we can see we're not even letting the combustion, we're not doing the combustion efficiently in terms of where we're burning it. We're also not doing it efficiently in that we're drawing the heat away from the process before it's even complete in a number of areas. Plus it's also in a tin box and they don't tend to be insulated. In fact, they'll have to protect the material inside, they'll very often have fire bricks which are just adding more mass. So we're spending a lot of energy heating mass and it's drawing energy out of the combustion.